Welcome to the Rabbit Foot Ranch Mug Project Slideshow. I'm Susan Martin Sarah of Belvedere Arts, located in beautiful Pagosa Springs, Colorado, and I'll be guiding you through the creative journey of how the mugs were made. One day, Shelley Peterson came by the Belvedere workshop and inquired about having mugs created just for Rabbit Foot Ranch. Shelley shared photographs that she had as a starting point in the process. In this image, you can see in the upper left a mug that Shelley liked for both size and basic shape. The ranch brand symbol was provided in the photograph in the upper right. Shelley's dad had painted a watercolor sketch shown in the lower left, which is wistful and impressionistic and served as an inspiration for the outside of the mugs. The water pitcher in the lower left provided an example of the clay that Shelley liked, a rustic, iron-bearing stoneware that would impart beautiful iron spots into the glazed surface of the mugs. Once a prototype has been created and has been approved as the example for the production of the mugs, the finished size of the fired prototype is used to calculate the clay shrinkage and figure out the dimensions of the wet wheel thrown mug body. A wire with wooden handles is used to cut through a 25 pound block of wet stoneware clay creating equal size small portions of clay. Each mug is made from one small block of clay. The cut portions of clay are then weighed to ensure size uniformity of each mug. Then each portion of clay is prepared for the potter's wheel through the process of wedging which realigns the clay particles in a manner that imparts strength to the thrown wear. Here's a piece of clay that has been wedged and is now ready to be placed on the potter's wheel. In this slide you see Brianna seated at the potter's wheel, about to attach a piece of clay to the wheel to center it. Pressure is applied both downward onto the clay and from the hip through the arm into the clay to center and compress. Once the clay is centered on the wheel head, the potter then places fingers into the center of the clay and opens it from the top to begin the forming of the mug wall. Once the clay has been opened, the wall of the mug is then raised by gently pulling the clay upward using the fingers of both hands. This action is repeated several times until the desired wall height and thickness is reached. Once the walls are pulled and shaped, the ruler is used to make certain that the wall height is correct. The diameter of the mug is then checked with a caliper to make sure the mouth of the mug will be properly sized. An angled wooden tool is used to remove clay from the base of the mug. The calipers is again used to measure the base. The lip of the mug is then smoothed using a chamois cloth. And the exterior of the mug is smoothed with a soft rubber rib. A heat gun dries the clay surface so that the piece can be moved from the wheel head without any distortion. And then the wire tool is used to separate the mug from the wheel head. And finally, the mug is lifted carefully with both hands from the wheel head and placed aside. The mug bottom is incised with Belvedere's mark, and the mugs are then placed on drywall board with a sheet of newspaper on top for a controlled drying period under dry cleaner plastic. Handles are pulled using the same clay as the body of the mug. Once pulled, handles are laid down flat for trimming and allowed to set out to reach the proper moisture content to make them pliable yet firm. When the mugs and handles have reached a similar moisture content, they are joined together. 
The points of contact are incised and slipped with a mixture of clay and water and carefully pressed together. The excess portion of the handle is trimmed away. In the next stage of the process, tiny patterns are used to transfer the brand design to the mug surface using a small stylus tool. The pattern is gently peeled back, revealing the design. The stylus tool is used to carve into the clay over the incised design, and a firm brush then removes the dry clay debris. With all the wet clay work finished, the mugs are placed top down on drywall board to slowly dry to the bone dry state in preparation for bisque firing. The mugs are loaded into an electric kiln in several shelf layers where they will be fired to over 1900 degrees Fahrenheit over a period of approximately 10 hours. This image shows a pyrometric cone pack with two cones in it. 05 and 04 which serve as a critical guide to the kiln operator in measuring the kiln temperature. When viewing the kiln interior to view the cone pack, it's necessary to wear protective eye gear and heavy gloves. After a long slow cooling period of many hours, the kiln is opened revealing the hardened wear. And here we have a finished bisque mug, ready for the next stages of cleaning and glazing. The cleaning process consists of a light sanding of the interior and exterior of the mugs to smooth the surfaces and remove rough spots, which lessens the likelihood of glaze flaws. After the sanding is complete, a thorough washing is done to remove any dust that accumulates from the sanding. For the next step, a white liner glaze is prepared using an electric mixer to make sure the glaze is smooth and without any lumps. The white liner glaze is hand poured into each mug and allowed to sit inside the mugs for approximately one minute to ensure that an adequate amount of glaze adheres to the clay surface. The extra glaze is dumped out into a tub for recycling. Each mug is carefully sponged to remove excess liner glaze from the exterior of the body. The rims are hand painted with an additional layer of liner glaze to ensure the application is adequate. And finally begins the hand painting of the exterior of each mug. This is a long process of painting seven layers of different colors onto the surface of each piece. Here you see the difference between the fired colors of the glaze, the brighter tiles at the bottom of the image, versus the lighter, undeveloped color of the raw glaze. The color difference makes painting glazes a challenge. This mug has all the colors that you see on the tiles below it, yet the colors are difficult to see and distinguish in their unfired form. Good note-taking during this process is just critical. After all the mugs are painted, they are carefully loaded into another electric kiln, this one a front loader. The kiln is fired to over 2,000 degrees to cone 6 to harden the clay and mature the glazes to their colorful state. And then the moment of truth. The kiln is open to reveal the final results of all the work that went before. The glazed surface on the wear is smooth and the color is well developed. A successful firing which took about eight hours and the cool down then took about three days. The kiln is then unloaded and the wear is ready for one final step before it's packed for delivery. The cone packs in the foreground show just how evenly the kiln temperature was from the lower to the upper levels of the kiln load. Our very last step before packing the mugs for delivery is to rub the mugs on the bottom with a fine grinding stone to make them very smooth to the touch. We hope you have enjoyed watching this presentation and happy trails!